Audiobook Academy. Book Summary. Lolita. By Vladimir Nabokov. A pedophilic compulsion drives the plot of Lolita, which takes place in the late 1940s. It begins with a fake lawyer handing over a manuscript to the author. The lawyer C.C. C. Clark has given the author permission to publish the account under pseudonyms because he is a clinical psychologist with a specialized in abnormal psychology. After the death of the girl, the original author of the manuscript agreed to allow the book to be released. Clark was delivering the manuscript to John Ray Jr., Ph.D. in the hope that he would be able to utilize it in his research because Lolita had recently died in childbirth and the author of the manuscript, Humbert Humbert, had died in prison. Humbert was smitten with a 12-year-old girl while he was just 13 years old. After roughly four months, the girl succumbed to her illness and died. When he was younger, Humbert was drawn to girls of that age, especially if they seemed sexually conscious to him. When he rents a room from his landlord, Lolita, he becomes obsessed with her 12-year-old daughter. He marries her mother in order to spend more time with the girl, even though he finds it difficult to stand her. After learning about his obsession with her daughter, the woman informs him that she would be leaving and taking her daughter along. Then, as she is about to leave, a car hits her and kills her. He's got Lolita all to himself now. In the course of their journey, he claims that she learns how to use his sexuality to her advantage. They go to a college town where he obtains a position as a professor and does everything he can to keep her away from other people. It drives him crazy that she persists on working in the play, and it makes him envious of her friendships with other young girls and boys. When Lolita becomes ill, she is taken to the hospital and given medicine. They inform Humbert that she is with her uncle when he arrives to pick her up. After a two-year search, Humbert receives a letter from her pleading for his assistance. When the kidnapper tries to escape, he rushes to save her. Humbert discovers that Lolita had freely gone with a mysterious figure named Quilty. Even though she was in love with him, he turned his back on her when she refused to appear in any of his pornographic films. She is now 17 years old, married, in debt, and pregnant. Despite Humbert's pleas for her to return to him, she rejects his advances. She gets $4,000 from him, and he heads off to find the Quilty. Humbert shoots Quilty multiple times after locating him. While incarcerated, Humbert continues to pen his autobiography. Shortly after Lolita died in childbirth of heart failure, his book is submitted to Ray, a psychotherapist. He received an envelope in 1952 that contained a document that had been written by an expert in abnormal behavior. As a result of the death of Humbert Humbert while awaiting trial, the lawyer, C. C. Clark, had approached Ray. Clark had a memoir written by Humbert that he thought Ray could utilize in his research and possibly publish. Both the employment of pseudonyms and the tragic death of the young girl Humbert wrote about were requirements. Further, Ray explained, because it had such a strong beginning, editing the manuscript was a breeze. Although he altered the girl's last name from Lolita, Dolores, to Hayes, he left the first because it was so vital to the plot and because Lolita is a nickname. At least one person has come forward to corroborate that the book is true, and Ray provides evidence to support this claim. It's not difficult to find out the identity of the person behind the pseudonyms, he explains. As far as Ray is concerned, the book will go down in the annals of psychology. In his opinion, Humbert's anomalous behavior and that of the 12% of males with a comparable problem can be remedied with severe psychiatric intervention. In addition, he believes that parents will learn from the book how to be more watchful. The narrative then switches to Humbert's perspective after Ray's opening remarks. It's a book he wrote. Humbert grew up in an affluent household. Despite the fact that his mother died when he was a baby, his aunt and his father, a Rivera hotelier, took on the responsibility of raising him. Due to his father's busy schedule and lack of availability, Humbert is forced to fend for himself. Humbert's notions of love are shaped by what he sees in French films and literature because he doesn't have many friends his own age. His first love at the age of 13 causes him to transition into an adult state of mind. Despite the fact that they never had intercourse, his strong feelings and bumbling influence his sexual cravings for the rest of his life, even if they never had sex. Because Annabelle died shortly afterward from typhus, he continued to think of her as 12 years old in his fantasies. Humbert abandons his studies in psychology to concentrate on English literature at college. Although he publishes a number of novels, he is only modestly successful in his endeavors. There are a few ladies Humbert's age that he has had sexual relations with, but he is generally horrified by them. He's exclusively interested in nymphettes, as he refers to them. Girls between 9 and 14, who are sexually conscious. For Humbert to be justified in his wands, 
he cites historical examples of unions in which men and young girls had a 30-year age gap. The fact that a guy can engage in sexual relations with a 17-year-old woman but not a 12-year-old is inexcusable to him. In his spare time, he likes to watch young girls play in the playground, but he only indulges his sexual fantasies with paid companions. Humbert wanted to get married in order to put an end to his sexual tendencies. He was drawn to a young woman because of her childlike features. However, once they were married, he came to dislike her and think she was naive. When he learned she was having an affair with a taxi driver, he was outraged. Humbert is charged with traveling to America to take care of his uncle's business after receiving a sizable bequest from his uncle there. Only to find out that she had decided to stay in France with her lover, he tried to persuade his wife to join him on the trip. To avoid any awkwardness, he leaves without her. Later, Humbert worked as a translator and copywriter in the perfume industry in the United States. He was soon hospitalized after suffering a breakdown. In order to better understand the consequences on his companions, Humbert accepted a position on an Arctic expedition after his release. The facts bore him to tears, so he fabricated a report and fled to the United States, only to be caught red-handed by the authorities. This time around, he kept himself entertained by inventing symptoms to show the psychologists while he was in the hospital. He left the sanitarium after a few months and went to live with an acquaintance of a distant relative of his uncle, Mr. McCoo, in a tiny town. His desires were sparked when he learned that McCoo had a 12-year-old daughter. Humbert, on the other hand, is forced to stay in a nearby boarding house because the McCoo house burned down. Charlotte Hayes, a widow, was in charge of running the place. Humbert had a strong dislike for her, and he didn't say it out loud. However, Humbert found her an amusing joke because she pretended to be an asset to the community as well as culturally aware. He figured she would try to seduce him, to his chagrin, and he was prepared for it. Dolores, the mother's 12-year-old daughter, piqued his interest. Dolores' resemblance to his first love, Annabelle, was nearly uncanny. He made the decision to make the room available for rent. As he sought for new methods to spend time with Dolores, he discovered that she had a crush on an actor who looked a lot like him. Humbert was overjoyed. Lolita's mother had to be endured, so he fantasized about killing her in order to remain around her. The three of them had been planning a trip to the lake for weeks, but their plans kept getting postponed. Lolita blew a fit and refused to accompany her mother to church on a Sunday when the trip was canceled for the second time. Lolita and Humbert were savoring some alone time. He had her sing a song and eat an apple on his lap as he climaxed. At some point in the future, as he strolled around town, he had fantasies about how he could make it happen again while still protecting her innocence because she had no idea what was going on. As soon as Charlotte revealed her plans to send Lolita to summer camp, Humbert broke down in a fit of rage. Humbert pretended to have a toothache in order to keep his feelings under wraps. She suggested that he see their neighbor, Dr. Quilty, for a checkup. His uncle was a dramatist and he was a dentist. Lolita's parting kiss convinced Humbert to reconsider moving out while they were abroad. He noticed a picture of the actor that resembled him in his initials, H.H., inscribed on it while he was exploring Lolita's room. He was compelled to stay after seeing this. Then he received a letter from Charlotte in which she expressed her affection for him. She advised him to leave if he wasn't satisfied. This convinced him to get married and move in with Lolita. Upon calling the camp to tell Charlotte, Lolita sounded busy. After the wedding, he hoped to win back Lolita's affections. Humbert's engagement to Charlotte wasn't as difficult as he had feared. He enjoyed having sex with her, and he appreciated her attention to him. He even thought she was getting attractive in his eyes. Jealous, she demanded to know about all of his previous relationships. To keep her entertained, he thought up a few of his own. It was going well until Charlotte stated she wanted a maid and wanted to send Lolita to boarding school. He didn't like her critiques of Lolita. Humbert was in a rage. Because he didn't want to repeat the mistakes he made with his first marriage, he suppressed his rage. Charlotte broke into a tiny table in his room and began reading his journal while he was at the doctor's office getting sleeping medicines for Charlotte and Lolita. In it, he detailed his feelings for Lolita. Angry, Charlotte threatened to leave him and her daughter behind. He received a phone call informing him that Charlotte had been killed in a car accident as he was trying to come up with a convincing argument to stop her from taking Lolita away. Charlotte's friends were instructed by Humbert not to notify Lolita, who is still at camp, so as not to jeopardize her time there. He then pretended that her mother was in the hospital in order to sneak into the camp and get her early the next morning. To make up for the time she wouldn't be home, 
He purchased her some clothes and other gifts and then booked a room at a motel Charlotte had previously recommended to him. Lolita tried to teach him how to kiss as they shared a bed. He went to the pub after she had fallen asleep. In the end, he concluded that he wanted her too much to perform the role of parent. Lolita instigated sex after they awoke the next morning together. Humbert wasn't her first sex experience at camp, she had previously had sex with another camper. Her attention frequently wandered away from him, even when she received gifts from him. He warned her not to speak to anyone when they left the motel. Humbert was frequently left in the dark about her true feelings for him due to her unpredictable nature. She persisted on speaking to her mother about the anguish she was experiencing as a result of their sexual interplay. Her mother had died at that time, and he informed her so. The more gifts he brought, the better he felt. Even though they were supposed to be in different rooms when they stayed at another motel, she climbed into his bed at some point during the night. Part 2 of this book began on the road. Humbert moved about a lot while they were having an affair to keep it a secret. The two stayed at various motels along the way. They made a few pit stops at various landmarks. He scoured the area for sites that would keep Lolita amused. Even yet, Lolita was more preoccupied with movies and other teenagers than she had been with schoolwork when she was a kid. She had a particular fondness towards males. It was Humbert's constant sexual awakening that Humbert blamed for her inability to sleep at night. A wide range of social classes and ages were represented among the men who expressed an interest in her. Humbert was envious to no end. One of the reasons he kept relocating was so that she wouldn't build bonds. Fearing arrest, he was continuously on the lookout. Meanwhile, he was working tirelessly to make Lolita happy so that they might have sex. To make matters worse, he kept buying her more and more gifts until she came to associate sex with the ability to acquire material possessions. It was common for her to have temper tantrums and threaten to call the police if she didn't get her way. He retaliated by telling her that he was the only one who could save her from her situation. She would be placed in an orphanage if she were to lose him. Despite the lavish attention, she continued to cry herself to sleep on a regular basis. Humbert would act as if he didn't hear her. In the end, Humbert took a job teaching at a women's college while Lolita went to a girls' school. He was shocked to find that the girls' school prioritized extracurricular activities over academics. Consolation came in the form of an apartment overlooking the playground where he could watch Lolita and her friends play. The nymphettes would no longer be visible to him because construction workers had arrived to build a wall. Lolita demanded money from Humbert despite the stipend and gifts he gave her, and refused sex unless he gave it to her. Humbert would give her the money, then sneak into her room when she was gone and steal some of it back from her. His goal was to make sure that she would not be able to leave him for someone else. He was terrified that she would leave or that someone would learn about their arrangement with him. Humbert exerted total authority over Lolita's daily activities, including her relationships with her friends and family. Especially when it comes to her interactions with boys. If she was in a group, he'd let her talk to the lads, but not if she was alone. Lolita's teacher brought Humbert in to talk about her lack of social connection with boys. Humbert was asked by her teacher to talk about sex with her and to let her go on dates. The pals of Lolita were all disliked by Humbert. None of her female companions matched his nymphette pattern and were too promiscuous for him. He made a significant concession by allowing her to take part in the school play. However, she continued to demand more money for sex and to defy her parents. As it turns out, he finally agrees to let her arrange a party for boys. Her disinterest in any of the boys is a relief to him. After buying her a tennis racket for Christmas, he followed up with a bike and book about famous artists for her birthday. Humbert enjoyed watching her ride the bike, but he was disappointed by her lack of interest in the arts. Lolita started to distance herself from him. Her absence from her piano lessons was discovered by Humbert. He knew she was lying as soon as he addressed her. She fled after a tense confrontation. The town and the school bothered her, she told him when he discovered her at a phone booth. She wanted to get out of the house as soon as she could. The two set off on the road once more after Humbert informed both his employer and her own school that he had been engaged to serve as a consultant on a film. Lolita, on the other hand, had a say in where they went. Little by little, the identity of Lolita's long-hidden bow began to emerge. Humbert's suspicions were mounting, but he couldn't pinpoint exactly who. With the help of a gun that belonged to Lolita's father, he began to keep watch at night. Humbert could feel Lolita drifting away from him. The fact that they were being watched was also not lost on him. Claire Quilty, the author of the play Lolita was intended to appear in, was mentioned frequently. The playwright, however, was a woman, according to Lolita. 
Humbert's suspicions rose, but he had no evidence, so he began to carry a revolver about with him. Lolita finally fell ill and ended up in the hospital. Humbert made frequent visits to her, bringing her presents. Although he was sick, he arrived on time to fetch her up. Lolita was nowhere to be found. To his dismay, he learned from the nurses that Lolita had checked out and left the hospital with her uncle. Humbert was enraged and hurling objects around in a hysterical manner. His promise to discover and murder her kidnapper was made after he was kicked out of the house. It was then that Humbert's long-term quest for Lolita was officially underway. His investigation led him to uncover that nearly all of the 342 motels they slept at on their road trip were under surveillance from the beginning of their journey. Hired a detective, who was unhelpful, after realizing he couldn't find her on his own. He had almost come to terms with the fact that he would never see Lolita again, so he got rid of some of her belongings and began seeing Rita, a 20-year-old. He continued to frequent the motels he stayed at with Lolita, reliving their liaisons, although never fully committing to their relationship. Rita grew increasingly unstable as she began to mistrust Humbert's lack of interest, and he began to drink more heavily. Humbert was the recipient of two letters. He received two letters from Lolita and one from a lawyer regarding the Hayes estate's settlement. She wrote a letter to Dad informing him that she was married, expecting a child, and in desperate need of financial help. When Humbert read the letter, he immediately set out to find Lolita. She had been kidnapped, and he assumed that her new husband was the kidnapper. He seized his revolver and planned to kill him. Humbert discovered Lolita had outgrown the nymph stage when he arrived to her clapboard home, but he still adored and desired her. In the yard, she spotted her husband, a normal guy who goes to work every day. It wasn't long before she conveyed to him what had transpired. Claire Quilty, a writer, was the man she left with. In his 80s, he was a reclusive guy who frequented her mother's old haunts. He was the love of my life, she said. So, she accompanied him on his journey. Some of his buddies hosted them at their ranch. Pornographic films were made there. Due to her desire for Quilty, Lolita opted out of the competition. In order to get her gone, he evicted her. After being forced to leave, Lolita traveled around, taking waitress jobs, where she met her husband, Dick. Initially, she thought she had no choice but to depart with Humbert if she wanted to collect any money. Even so, he promised to give her $4,000. She accepted the money, but politely informed him that she had rejected him. Humbert walked away from her, sobbing, and went in search of Quilty as far as I know. Lolita had declared that if ever she left, she'd go to Quilty. The thief had to be put out of his misery. Humbert was able to track down Claire's whereabouts after paying a visit to her father, a dentist. Humbert was armed when he confronted Claire. During the conversation, he reminded Claire of Lolita's many transgressions. Humbert chased Claire about while firing as he tried to bribe and plead for his life. Humbert didn't feel as vindicated as he had hoped to after the incident. Upon walking downstairs he discovered a group of men and women, drinking. They didn't even notice the shooting. Humbert attempted to flee in his car but was stopped because he ran a red light. It wasn't murder, he thought from his cell, but the ruination of Lolita's life that was his genuine crime. Don't let Quilty's death bring you down, instead, focus on keeping your relationship with Dick strong and refraining from interacting with outsiders. Humbert Humbert, a pseudonym for the fictional writer and narrator of the book. In his 40s, he is an attractive and sexy man. A pedophile who uses flowery prose to rationalize and rationalize his crimes in an attempt to win over the reader. He exudes arrogance, self-assurance, and conceit. Because he considers himself superior to the Americans around him because of his European heritage, he labels them all as bourgeois. While writing in his voice, he paints her as being in charge of their relationship. Instead of seeing himself as the seducer, he thinks of himself as a victim who has been taken in by the other person. He has a lust for what he calls nymphettes, which shows that he is psychologically ill, girls between 9 and 14. He is seduced by their childlike trustworthiness. Despite the fact that he is married and has interactions with women, his sexual fantasies are reserved for young girls. He grows obsessed with Lolita and finally admits that he took her childhood when he is writing his story from prison after killing her lover. Dolores, Lolita, Hayes, another pseudonym. Since the popularity of this novel, the name Lolita has come to be associated with an underage sex bot, but the character in Nabokov's book is not at all attractive, except to a pedophile. She's neither attractive nor endearing. She's short, freckled, and has a bad attitude. Oh, and she swears a lot. Despite her intelligence, Lolita has a hard time learning and avoids school. 
but she defies Humbert's efforts to both make her more intelligent and retain her childish innocence. She is clearly confined, but Humbert perceives her as unconcerned about the sexual torture she has suffered. She undergoes a dramatic shift in personality as the narrative progresses. As a child, she lives with her mother in a rural area. Humbert compels her to mature sexually before she matures physically or emotionally, despite the fact that she has some sexual experience at the age of 12. In the six years of the story, she grows increasingly estranged from him. At least two older males sexually abused her before she turned 18. She is pregnant and married to another man. She succumbs to her injuries while giving birth to the child. Charlotte Hayes, Lolita's mother, a pseudonym. At the age of 45, she is divorced. In Nabokov's depiction of the archetypal middle-aged American woman, she is blonde and slender. She has no class in Humbert's eyes, yet she thinks of herself as intelligent. She perceives Lolita's youth as a threat because of it. In order to progress her connection with Humbert to a more romantic one, she sends her daughter to camp. As if that weren't enough, Nabokov has her learn about her new husband's longing for her kid just seconds before she's hit by a car and killed instantly. Claire Quilty, a more typical pedophile. Only when Humbert meets him and murders him does he come to life. Quilty is a well-known playwright. But he's also a pornographer. Humbert saw Alita as little more than an infet Quilty used because she was attractive. Humbert's evil side is depicted in his character. There are hints of him throughout the narrative. The employment of initials, references, place names, etc., to develop tension is common. Eloquent and well-educated, too. He tries to persuade Humbert not to kill him by using flowery language and logical reasoning. For those times when bribing is ineffective, Quilty goes on to threats. Perverse pastimes are available from him. Humbert, on the other hand, decides to kill him. Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button for more content like this. See you in next video.